In this tutorial, we're going to see if double optimizing an image is worthwhile in terms of file size savings. What I mean by double optimize is you use a tool like a photo editor or an online compression tool to compress an image once, and then you have a plugin on your site to compress the image again after you upload it. And we're going to see if that's a worthwhile endeavor. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, Make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. We're going to use this big old image right here for the purposes of this video. It fits in with the theme of our macaroon site that we've been working on the past little while. And it's large. It is over 5,000 pixels wide, over 3,500 pixels high. It's just way too big for anything aside from a hero image at the top of your website. Even for a hero image, these dimensions are, are quite large. There are very few monitors that are this big. So let's download this image and optimize it for our website. Uh, before I do, just want to say this is the Envato Elements that I'm using here. I use it for my stock photos and videos and graphics and stuff. It's a couple hundred bucks a year, and I find it to be very reasonable because it's unlimited downloads, and they have so much stuff, and it's great quality. Anyway, let's download that, add it to a project, add and download. Here it is right here. It is 8.3 megabytes in file size, which is way too big for an image on your website unless you're selling it. Even if you're selling it, you have a preview image that's much smaller that loads faster, and you sell the bigger high quality image. You deliver that via email or via some other way after. And if I preview the image, it's quite large. So let's reduce the size. If we go to Google and we look up image compression, we find one of my favorite image compression tools, this one right here. It allows you to compress JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, SVGs, and GIFs. And JPEG and PNG being the most common for images. And our image here is a JPEG. It's going to click and drag that right to there. Here it says 7.9 megabytes instead of 8.3. Either way, it's going to be a lot smaller in just a minute. It's compressing. And it's now been reduced by 84%. So let's download this. And that website conveniently adds a dash min to signify that it's smaller. And now we see it's down to 1.3 megabytes. It's still larger than images I'd want to see on a website, but it's much smaller. And it retained the same quality. If you look at the different images, I'm going back and forth right now just on my keyboard and pressing up and down. You can see in the finder over here, I'm switching the image. But you can't really tell the difference in the quality as I go back and forth. But the file size is way, way smaller. So that's the first method to reducing your image size. And we can mix and match these methods I'm showing you. You can use one of them, use all of them, depending on what your needs are. Next, I'm going to go over to Canva at canva.com. And I'm going to create a design. And I'm going to make custom dimensions. I'm going to make these the dimensions I want the image to be on the website. If you want to keep the same aspect ratio, you would take the dimensions you have right here and put them into a simple calculator. I'm just going to Google image or calculator to scale image dimensions. And the one I often use is this one right here. And all you have to do is you enter the old width, the old height. You choose a new width or a new height, and you set with that new width or height that you want down here. So let's put in the old width, which is 5331, and the old height, which is 3650. I'm going to choose new width, and I want to have 800 as my width. And here it shows 800. And here it shows the height, 547.7. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. So I could come in here if I want to keep the same aspect ratio and have this 800 wide and have 547 or round it up to 548 for the width or sorry, for the height. So it's the same aspect ratio. I'm going to click on create design. Now all we have to do is drag and drop this guy over. I'm going to use the original in this case, just so I can show you a different way to compress this. Because you don't have to use the image compressor if you don't want to. You can just use Canva. Scale it down. And then stretch it so it covers the whole background. Go to Download and choose PNG, or sorry, JPEG. It defaults to PNG. Choose JPEG because it's a smaller file size. Click on Download. And if we check out our image, it's right here, Untitled Design. That's how I download it so didn't set a title in Canva. You can set a title up here, then I'll download with that title. But for me, I just download whatever it is, and I change the file name. So let's just change it to, let's call this one Canva, so we know where it came from. And this is down to 71 kilobytes. This is an image size that I like for weight. And we see it's this big with the new dimensions, and 
it's much smaller, as you can tell. And the image weight is much smaller as well. The minified one, or the compressed one, is 1.3 megabytes. Now we could also go and compress this one from Canva. So we come back over here. Let's just clear this queue. Let's drag and drop the Canva image over. Compressed by 11%. Let's see what that means in real numbers. It's down to 63 kilobytes, so it's a little bit smaller. So you can do it that way. You can go to Canva, scale the image down to the size you want, and then come back and compress it. Or you can compress it first, then scale it down. You have pretty much the same image sizes in the end going either way. And now let's take this one step further, upload this to our website, and use ShortPixel, my favorite image compression plugin, to see if we can compress these images even further. So here we are on the dashboard of the website. To add a new plugin, we go to Plugins, and then Add New. And I'm going to look up Short Pixel, and I'm going to install Short Pixel Image Optimizer. There's also Short Pixel Adaptive Images. They are two separate plugins that do two very different things. I have a tutorial in the card above and the description down below that compares the two and explains which one of these two you'd want to have. I'm going to install Short Pixel Image Optimizer in this case. If you're sticking with the free account of Short Pixel, this is usually the way to go. I'm going to click on Install Now and Activate. And if you're installing this on the live website, you should back up your site first. Although things will go wrong very often, sometimes they do. You want to make sure you have a backup. I've linked a tutorial in the card above and the description down below if you need help with that. So I'm going to add my API key and click on validate. If you don't have a short pixel account yet, click on the short pixel link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link, but when you click it and you go to their website and you go to the pricing page, you'll see a badge on all of these that says plus 50% including the free one. So instead of 100 free image compressions a month, you get 150 if you go through that link down below the video. And like I said, it's an affiliate link. If you do end up upgrading in the future, I will get a commission. It does not make it more expensive for you, but it does help keep this channel going. And all the accounts you upgrade to will also be plus 50%. So if you get the XXL account in the future, you'll have just over 25,000 additional images, image compressions every month beyond what shows here which is huge. So anyway, just sign for the free account just to get started. And when you're starting out, you can just keep these settings as they are. And I'm going to go to the media library and we're going to go to add new. And I'm going to drag and drop all of our images. Wait, all of them? Canva min. Yeah, why not? Drag and drop all of these to see what kind of compression short pixel does for us. I'm going to switch from the thumbnail view to the list view, and we see on the right hand side here, short pixel is currently compressing these images that were just uploaded. I'll pause the video until the compression is done, and we'll come back and see what the results are. So none of those compressions worked because this website right here is locally hosted on my computer, and the way short pixel works is you upload an image to your media library, it then uploads it to the short pixel server where it's compressed, and then the plugin re-downloads it and puts it in your media library for the compressed version. And that doesn't happen when you're working locally. So I redid these uploads on a live website and it worked much better over there. This is the results that we have for the Canva Min, which was the smallest one, if you recall. Let's go back to here. The Canva Min was only 63 kilobytes. That's the smallest size image that we have. That's now been reduced by another 35% by using Short Pixel. And just the Canva was reduced 38%. The Macaroons Min, which was still 1.3 megabytes when we just did the scaling, not the resizing, was 1.3 megabytes. That's reduced 64%. And the original was reduced almost 90%. But what does that actually mean in terms of kilobyte size? Well, if we go into our file manager, I went to uh, WP Content, Uploads. I found the images. They're all in this folder right here. You see a whole bunch of images with image dimensions at the end. These are ones that WordPress creates when you upload an image. Every time you upload an image, WordPress will create a bunch of different versions of it for different parts of the theme, different parts of your website. Do not delete these. I'm going to delete them right now so we have a more clear picture of image sizes from our compression efforts. But if you find these on your site, don't delete them. Just leave them as they are. So here we are. This was the original right here. And it was, where is it? Right here, 8.3 megabytes. It's down to 408 kilobytes with short pixel. It's still a little large for my tastes. And then we uploaded that to the compression website, and we got the min version, the smaller version at 1.3 megabytes, which was reduced to 394 
So by compressing it somewhere else first and then compressing it again with short pixel, it's a little bit smaller. And if we go to our Canva ones, this is the Canva original and the Canva compressed afterwards, they're now the same size. When we did that manually, we had the Canva being 71 kilobytes and the compressed Canva one being 63 kilobytes. And they're both now smaller than either of those at 41 kilobytes. And you might think the difference between 63 kilobytes and 41 is not that big. Maybe I shouldn't use a compression plugin. The way I think about it is if you're getting a thousand visitors a day to your website and you have 500 blog posts with two images each, and each of those images is just a little bit bigger than it needs to be, that leads to huge bandwidth consumption when you have a lot of visitors. So the smaller you can get your stuff, the better it is. And if we go back into the media library, we can actually compare the original ones to the compressed ones. So I click on this little hamburger icon, I go to compare, and this is a bad example because those ones are too large. Those are the originals. Let's go down to the Canva one, compare that one. Now we can compare them with the slider, the original on the left, short pixel on the right. We can see there's a bit of quality loss with the short pixel one. And that's based on our settings. You can set it so you don't lose much quality. I have another tutorial that goes through all the short pixel settings. That's in the card up above and the description down below if you want to check that out. But I think the difference is hardly noticeable and the reduction in file size can go a long way if you get a lot of traffic to your website. Next up, check out this video right here where I show you how to use the asset cleanup plugin which you can use to turn off certain scripts on certain pages. So you can potentially speed up your site even more using this video right here. So make sure to check that out and then check out the WordPress speed up playlist down here if you need any other help with speeding up WordPress. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.